Okay, hi guys. Um, so I'm gonna start so we can finish, so we can go uh, eat lunch. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Natasha. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Today I'll talk about uh, context propagation in open telemetry, and I'll share some uh, examples um, that hopefully can be helpful to you. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer. I'm working at a really cool startup called Helios. Uh, a little bit about that in a second. I was part of the core team, and I joined uh, two years ago. Uh, before that, I was the data team lead at Oribi, which was acquired by LinkedIn. Um, a little bit about Helios. Um, so like I said, we have a re really cool uh, product uh, that is based on OpenTelemetry, which I will talk about today. Uh, basically, what we give you uh, is, as a developer, the ability to have an end-to-end -end visibility uh, to your distributed systems. Uh, so you can um, uh, find, troubleshoot, and fix your, uh, your issues. Uh, if you want your systems to look like that, uh, you're more than welcome uh, to check us out. So today, uh, I'll talk about distributed tracing, like I said, and its implementation uh, in OpenTelemetry. I'll start with uh, some basic uh, example, and I'll move on to some more complex uh, examples um, that hopefully uh, will help you understand a bit better how to properly do that. Uh, I found that a lot of the times, uh, the getting started examples um, are lacking and can leave us as developers who are trying to, to implement something with this, like, okay, so this is very basic. How do I take that and move that to my more complex uh, system? Um, I'll end with a real-world example that I hope you can agree with me that it's really complex and not that trivial. Um, and that's it. I hope that uh, by the end of this talk, it will give you uh, the energy uh, to implement distributed tracing in your own system. So I'll start my talk with a story about Maya. Uh, Maya is a software engineer. She's working at a really cool startup. Uh, her team is working uh, with uh, microservices, as is very popular, and I'm sure all of you are. Uh, so this is an overview of her system. You can see that uh, you have multiple microservices. You have your HTTP uh, communication. You have your uh, communication via uh, Kafka messaging system, where one service is writing messages and another one is consuming them. You have writing and reading from a document DB. And then you have uh, the final uh, services that uh, has some sort of interaction with Kubernetes cluster. More on that later. Um, so on the, next, on the last day of the sprint, uh, Maya starts working on a bug in her system where uh, one of the flows uh, is broken and data is not being saved to the, to the database. Uh, so she moves the ticket to in progress and she starts investigating. Um, so she knows her system pretty well, and she knows that in a distributed system uh, that is composed of multiple microservices, the first thing you want to do when you troubleshoot is to find where the flow is broken. Uh, so what she's doing is starting to look at some logs. Uh, and that is not very helpful because um, the logs don't contain any indicative errors that can assist her. Um, and, and at this point, she's not sure, uh, she's not really sure uh, how to proceed. Uh, she understands that uh, even though she has logs uh, to, to the systems, she's already annoyed because it's 12.30 and, uh, and the food is not anywhere, uh, uh, anywhere in sight. Um, and, but also she knows that because the logs are specific to each of the services, uh, it's very hard to... To, to connect the, the dots together and to see something that is coherent to the flow. Uh, so at this point, she doesn't really know what to do. Uh, and she's uh, very, very frustrated, like I said. Um, and then she remembers that last year she went to KubeCon and she heard a talk about uh, distributed tracing. So she searches through Google and she sees that OpenTelemetry is a project that uh, is an implementation of, uh, open to, of uh, distributed tracing. 
Um, and she sees that it's the second largest uh, open source project uh, after Kubernetes and has a lot of uh, big companies uh, invested in them, which makes it a real industry standard. Uh, she searches through the getting started and she sees something about how, how everything is automa uh, automatically uh, working and she doesn't need to do a lot more than just install uh, these SDKs. So her eyes light up. Uh, in the meantime, her food arrives, and she decides that after lunch, she's going to install these SDKs uh, on her services and see if it helps her uh, find where the issue is. So after lunch, she installs the SDKs. And the inst installation was very easy and very simple. Um, and she runs the services, and she starts seeing some data. Uh, but uh, here you can see, by the way, uh, the Yegi UI, which is also an open source project that enables uh, us to see a visualization of distributed tracing data. Um, but as you can see, I hope that only part of the flow appears here. And the rest of the flow, starting from write, writing to Kafka, is missing. Uh, so she starts getting frustrated again. Uh, it's already 3 p.m. She's dying for coffee. Uh, she's waiting for her happy hour, which is only at 4, because she wants cupcakes with her coffee. Um, but also she's annoyed because she had spent some time on this task, on installing and running, and it, it takes time, as you know. Um, and she's not really sure what the problem is and why she's not seeing the, the additional data. Uh, so she goes back to the documentation, she tries to understand if she's missing something, um, and no matter what she's doing, it's not working, the additional data is not, uh, is not appearing, and uh, she goes home in the evening, at the end of the day, feeling really annoyed and frustrated. And it is, it is annoying to try to install something that's supposed to be helpful, uh, only to, uh, to discover that it's not as easy as advertised in the Getting Started uh, page, and that the examples that they show you there are really, really simple and easy, but the minute that you need to do something that is a bit, uh, a bit more complex, it's just not working. Uh, so the next day, uh, Gavin, the CEO, announces a reorg in the company. <laughs> Maya is being moved to another team. And her uh, task and the bug are going to uh, Jira's graveyard. Um, and uh, along with it, the open telemetry in, uh, integration. So I assume this sounds familiar to some of you, at least. Uh, whether you've tried to install some observability solution, maybe even open telemetry, uh, to your system, and it wasn't the smooth ride uh, you expected. Um, so let's try to, to understand what happened there. Uh, in Maya's system, and before that, let's go over some, uh, some very uh, basic uh, concept in distributed tracing, in case some of you uh, don't know it or don't remember. So distributed tracing is the ability to track, uh, to track requests and flows through your system and through various components in microservices in the cloud. Uh, and service instrumentation is the act, act of uh, measuring a service and actions within a service. Uh, so when you instrument a service, uh, there is a unique, uh, an object is created with a unique identifier for each action. Uh, and this uh, object contains information about the action, like when it happened, how long it took, and any other uh, additional properties that you can decide on. Um, and open telemetry, like I said, is an implementation uh, of distributed tracing, and it enables instrumentation in two ways, uh, manual and automatic. So manual means that OpenTelemetry has an API that you can use uh, to wrap calls and parts of your code, uh, and that way instrument your service and create these objects, these spans. Uh, and automatic means that for uh, various libraries, OpenTelemetry does this for us and has its own implementation, so we as developers don't need to do anything. And this is true for uh, various databases, uh, reads and writes, and HTTP calls. Uh, and this is also something that OpenTelemetry provides. <laughs> Another very important concept, uh, maybe its most important concept in uh, distributed tracing, is context propagation. Um, so 
we understand that in order for us to piece a bunch of actions that are part of the same flow into one coherent flow, we need some, some identifying information that will pass between them. Um, so in open telemetry, uh, this identifying information is called the context. Um, and it contains, among other things, the trace ID, which is the identifier for this trace, for this flow. Um, and the act of transferring it between actions in the same flow is called propagation. Uh, and again, here, uh, open telemetry allows us to, to have uh, and to implement context propagation in two ways, manual and automatic. And again, here, automatic means that open telemetry does this for us. Uh, and, and we as developers don't need to, to take any action to, to make it happen. Um, so let's go back to, to Maya's system. Uh, if you remember, we did see the, the data uh, from the first and the second service. And if you remember what I said, uh, since this is an HTTP uh, communication, this is something that is uh, automatically implemented within OpenTelemetry. And we as developers don't need to do anything to, to, to make it happen. Um, and before we move on, let's try and think how, how we would implement it, okay? how this happens. So if you had to, to pass data uh, uh, through HTTP requests, what would you use? So I hope, I hope the, the, the answer pops uh, immediately to mind that you would use the headers, right? The request headers. And this is exactly what OpenTelemetry uh, does. It inserts, injects uh, the context into the headers. Uh, it's called trace uh, parent, the name of the of the specific header, um, and this is a this is an example of exactly how it would look like. And another thing to note is that it's not en enough to inject the context. You need to also in the in the service that uh, that is basically the server that accepts the the request. You need to extract the context and then apply it to the rest of the code's execution. Uh, and again, OpenTelemetry does this automatically for us, so we don't need to do anything. And this is why Maya saw, saw this trans transition. Okay, so we didn't see the rest of the flow. Okay, you have here a service uh, writing to Kafka and a service reading from Kafka. So we can assume that uh, something is wrong with context propagation, and true enough, OpenTelemetry does not support this automatically. I should say as a side note that this depends on the language and depends, and, and there are some uh, open source solutions that, that do implement it, but just for the sake of, of this example, let's assume it's not supported uh, automatically. Okay, so what can we do? So I said already before, I hope you remember, that this is also supported manually. So OpenTelemetry exposes an API that we as developers can use to allow context propagation, we just need to do it manually. So what we would need to do is to somehow uh, inject the context before sending the message and then extract the context uh, before reading it and then applying it to the rest of the code. Um, so let's think how we would do it, how we would do it in, in Kafka. So the simplest way would be to just insert it to the message, right, um, and then read it in all the consumers. But this can be a bit annoying because, and because each of the consumers would need to adapt uh, and adjust the code so that the message stru structure is, uh, is um, uh, appropriate. Uh, but apparently, in uh, Kafka, we also have uh, something that's called uh, message headers. And we can use that. It's very similar to headers in HTTP. And what we can do is inject the context to the message headers and then read it in each of the consumers. And that way, avoid any pitfalls that can happen when the structure of the message is uh, changed. Uh, so here you can see uh, an example. This is specifically uh, in uh, Node. Uh, but you can see how easy and straightforward this is. You inject the active context to the message headers and then uh, send the message. And that way you're done, you injected the context. And like I said, it's very important to remember that on the receiving end, the reading end, uh, we also need to extract it and to apply it to the rest of the code. Here again, you can see how easy this is and how easy the API is. We simply extract the context from the headers and then run the rest of the code with this uh, context. Um, 
I should say that when it comes to, to Kafka and specifically uh, mecha messaging mechanisms that uh, allow batch uh, processing, there are some additional things you should probably consider when you implement distributed tracing, but this is out of the scope of this uh, talk. But if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, to talk about it uh, later. Um, so cool, if we, run, uh, if we run our code again, uh, we should be able to see the data. We, we do indeed see the data because we managed to propagate the context and, uh, and, and we managed to, to, to make it happen and let's, uh, let's try to see uh, how we move on. And this is almost becoming a sort of a puzzle, right? Where should we inject the context and, and how? Um, so the next stage is writing to a document DB and then reading the document from it. And let's think how we would do it. Uh, so it depend, depends on the, on the database that you're using and maybe there's uh, a mechanism that is similar to headers and the specific database you're using. But specifically here, since this is a NoSQL database, the easiest thing would be to, is to just inject the context into the document itself under some predefined hierarchy, right? Um, and this is done very, very easily, like I, like I showed you uh, before. And trust me, this would work. Um, okay, so if you're still not convinced and you don't believe me and you're saying to yourself, these are two also very, very basic examples like HTTP, uh, you didn't show us anything that is uh, too complex. This is not very helpful. Uh, I hope now that I can show you um, a scenario that we came across with one of, of our customers, and uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, I'll deliver uh, with it. So let's assume that the task handler service, what it does is it reads a document from our document DB, and then what it does is uh, make a call to a Kubernetes cluster and runs... Uh, some runs a logic in, uh, as part of a task uh, in a job, okay? Depending on the settings that it had, uh, that it had read from this uh, document, okay? Um, so let's think what we would try, what we want to achieve here, okay? So what we would want is basically see the flow starting from our API gateway through the filtering service, then through Kafka, then through the document DB, and all the way to the code that is run within the job within the Kubernetes cluster. Okay? That would be super cool to see. Uh, so I hope you can agree this is not trivial. Um, first of all, we're using here a very specific API to communicate with Kubernetes. It has very, a, a very specific set of objects. Uh, that allow us to do that. So we need to understand and think how we can propagate the context there. Um, so in order to achieve this, what we would do is we, we try to start scrolling through the Kubernetes API and see which objects we have when running a task. Uh, so we'll go through a bunch of things and then if, finally we would see that there is an object called v1nvar and these are the environment variables that we can, uh, that we can define for the, for the task. Um, and that would be an amazing solution for us, okay? Uh, this is something we can definitely use. We can inject the context as an environment variable and then have the code that we run within the, within the task try to extract it and apply it to the code execution. Um, and I showed you before a code snippet that's pretty simple, and uh, you're probably wondering, okay, so I can, I can just, uh, I can just uh, use a, uh, anything I want as a carrier. So the answer is you can use almost everything you want as long as it answers a very, very simple API, which is get and set. And this is something we can easily implement to an array or array of uh, environment variables. And uh, doing that would make it work, and we should see the flow all the way from the gateway down to the specific code that is run within the task within the Kubernetes cluster. And there are a bunch of other examples that you can think of, try and think about your uh, system um, and uh, in any scenario, I'm sure you can find something that would work there. So uh, I'd want to summarize now, and uh, if there are three things I want you to take from this, uh, from this talk, uh, is that uh, OpenTelemetry allows you both manual and automatic uh, way to instrument the service and also propagate context. So whenever you come across uh, 
some specific scenario in your system where you see traces break, you should think, OK, is the context propagated? If not, if it's not automatic, don't despair. You can probably do it manually. Uh, and make sure you check the language that you're using and the supported uh, instrumented uh, libraries, because this is something that is updated constantly uh, in open telemetry. Um, the second thing I want you to remember is when it comes to context propagation, you need to both inject and don't forget to extract the context and apply it to the rest of the code, because otherwise you're breaking, you're breaking your flow. And the last thing is that you should always try to find the right carrier that is uh, specific to your scenario. And like I said, uh, usually you will be able to find, to find one. We came across some really, uh, really specific uh, scenarios using uh, SNS, SQS, and Lambda, uh, using Databricks. You can find a solution almost to anything. Uh, so uh, think, of it, think of it as a, as a challenge. Um, and that's it. I hope that, uh, that this uh, talk got you a bit motivated <laughs> and, uh, and energized to, to implement distributed tracing in your system. Uh, this is definitely something that uh, can boost up your, uh, your development process. Um, and I hope that, uh, that you're not feeling too bad for uh, Maya, <laughs> because uh, she's here today, and sh tomorrow her day will be amazing. Um, so thank you very much for listening. I'm here for any questions or uh, things you want to, to, to know better. Um, and that's it. Thank you for uh, listening.